eating many crops and plants, any further losses could have a devastating impact. Rebecca Morrell, BBC News. Now, with three chart hits and a MOBO award under his belt, Fuse ODG is part of the rise in the popularity of African music. Of British and Ghanaian descent, the singer creates music that's inspiring a new generation here in the UK. But Fuse believes the popularity of African music goes further than tunes and dancing, and he's hoping to change perceptions of Africa itself. In a moment, I'll be talking to him, but first let's listen to a clip of his hit track, Antenna, that reached number seven in the UK charts last year and scored 10 million YouTube hits. Now, you were dancing through that. I know, right? You've heard it a few times <laughs> before, could, though. I couldn't help myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Dancing, dancing's good. T t tell us a little bit about what you want to do with your music for the way in which we see yeah. Africa. I mean, first of all, um, I wanted to create a platform to be able to speak to their masses, and I did that through my music, and I'm doing that through my music. And um, through my music, I actually went to Ghana to actually learn about you know, African music so I can bring it you know, to, to the UK. And did you, know, you not know about that part of your background? I feel, I've grown up on African music and I was making like, you know, garage, gram, hip hop, you know, living in the UK, I grew up in the UK. But when I went back, um, it kind of became more than, the, more than the music for me. My experience in Africa, my experience in Ghana, kind of seeing the people, how the people were, you know, it was nowhere near like what I've been seeing on TV, you know, back mm -hmm. in the UK. You know, so to me, same way, you know, one of my first songs was called Azonto, I discovered it in Ghana and I brought it to the UK. You know, I kind of discovered a whole new experience of Africa. You know, that dance the and joy. I guess joy, and joy is the thing that people think. You know, and you know, successful people in many different sectors, such as you know, technology, fashion, you know, all these different things that these guys were actually doing. It's like, you know, same kind of entrepreneurs that I would meet here. I would meet someone in Ghana with the same kind of mentality, but that's not what I would really see back in the UK. So to me, I just wanted to share that new Africa that I experienced you know, to, to a whole different audience, you know, which is, you know, the UK and the Western world. The, 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 the thing about this is I had a conversation of, with Baba Mal a few years okay. ago who said the same kind of things. Yeah. He said, you folks don't get the great yeah. joy in Africa. It's crazy. But that was years ago, and I'm not sure very much has changed. So however hard you are trying, you're, yeah. you're pushing uphill, aren't you? Yeah, no, I definitely want to bring that, that feeling that I got, you know, in Africa, and I'm doing that through my music. But through the music, I've also travelled to so many different countries in Africa and I've discovered, you know, I've met so many great people that, you know, I feel like the world needs to know, the world needs to see that side of Africa. I mean, I did a talk um, in the US um, to a couple of students and the ideas that they were sharing about how to, you know, change their perception and how to show Africa the way they've experienced it was, was, was so amazing that I feel like we need a platform you know, to exchange ideas and to be able to showcase Africa in, in that positive way that we've experienced it. Do you think, do you think that's, you've, you've hit on one of the reasons where we're going wrong here, because Africa is so vast. Yeah. You're from Ghana. Yeah. If you go to Kenya, if yeah. you go to South Africa, and then if you go to Zimbabwe and yeah. the Central African Republic yeah. where there's a lot of, lot of difficulties. I mean, it's just so vast that we seem to roll it all up as if it's one place, which it is. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So that's one of the things that I'm hoping that Tina, this is New Africa, as you, as you can see on my hat, I'm hoping that could be a platform that can educate the world about Africa. And to me, the music is my way of showing it. And I'm calling out to other, you know, other people who's been to Africa to showcase that, you know, their own way. You know, so there's so many different artists that's doing their thing as well. You know, there's so many different people that's doing their thing in the fashion world as well, in the technology world. And I feel like Tina is a way to, to showcase that to Africa because I feel like the media, you know, don't, the media don't really show that side of Africa that I've experienced. I, I think that's a fair criticism. But on the other hand, you know, people can like the music of Tinarawen, they can like mm -hmm. what you do, mm -hmm. and then they think about what's going on in Mali. Yeah. And that's, that's a reality too. I mean, it's not yeah, all yeah, wonderful yeah. music. Nah, and, you yeah. know, you've got to face yeah. that too, haven't you? Now, nah, definitely, there's, you know, there's some truth in, you know, some of the stuff that's happening. Like, you know, there's, there's people struggling in Africa, just like anywhere in the world, you know, but I feel like there need to be a balance. You know, and I'm the, I feel like, I, you know, I could be one of the people to bring that balance to that perception of Africa. And when we do highlight the negative stuff, what are we doing about it? You know, that's something that I'm also passionate about, making sure that people are actually, 
doing something about what's happening in Africa as well, you know, once we actually highlight the negative stuff that's happening. The, the, the interesting thing about what you do, what Africa Express yeah. does as well, is it's a kind of entry level, isn't it? It's, uh, people can appreciate the music and not yeah. really think about Africa. I know, I know. And then you can make them think or I help know. to make them but think. But that's the thing, my music is quite light. You know, you hear my music and you just, you, you dance to, you don't think about anything else. But that's why when I get on platforms such as the Mobos, I make sure that I let the world know that this is more than music for me. I'm not just doing this to make you dance. I'm doing this to showcase something that, I, that I've experienced, you know, showcase a new side of Africa that the media wasn't showing when I was growing up. When I was in school, in secondary school, I wasn't too proud to be African because I would get into a lot of fights, you know, just for being African and for my accent. But now things have changed because the younger people are feeling really proud to be African because our music is everywhere. You know, a young kid's phone might, might ring in the, in the class and it might be antenna playing or, you know, an Afrobeat song playing. So it's a whole different sense of pride, you know, that's kind of taken over the young people um, these days. And what, also growing up in the UK is why I did a lot for young people in the UK in general. You know, because I felt like the perception of young people wasn't too great a couple of years back. So I did a project in order to change the perception of young people by showcasing young people, you know, in a positive way, giving them activities to do and us having a showcase at the end. You know, so I'm really passionate about helping other people, but I just wanted to share my side of Africa when I was But it's there. interesting, we're just running out of time, but what, what's interesting is it's also true that you had certain prejudices in your head when you went there. Yeah, and that's, exactly. that's changed, exactly. so that's, that's an interesting exactly. part of so your story. I would story. promote for you guys to go to Africa and actually experience it for yourself, because <laughs> I'm telling you, you wouldn't want to come back. Okay, <laughs> we'll leave it there, Fuse. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thank you. Now, and to play us out, here is Fuse's latest hit, Million Pound Girl. Here's Thomas is going to do his rain dance. Yeah, yeah, and the viewers just missed your moves. They were pretty good. <laughs> yeah, Gavin well, was giving uh, yeah. it all. <laughs> <laughs> right, what's on the weather front? Uh, well, actually, it's going to be quite a nippy one tonight. You have to get your hot water bottles in because temperatures are going to dip close to freezing. In some rural spots, there'll be some showers around. We've had plenty of showers uh, today. I see this uh, thick band of cloud. That's what brought the rain last night and rain for the first part of, part of the day in the southeast. It's out in the North Sea now. Now we've got these speckles. Uh, towards the uh, west. So uh, these, these are showers and they'll continue to uh, be driven in by a westerly wind through the course of the night. Uh, the skies will clear in some uh, western areas as well. So I think these areas around about here probably most likely uh, touching uh, uh, an air frost even in one or two spots. So three, three or four degrees in city centres. Let's have a look at the forecast then. This is around about the rush hour.